Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you're having a good time, whatever time it is where you are. This is the second in a series of flips about critical thinking for a class at Hokkaido University of Education. Again, this class is both about critical thinking and about learning English. In this lecture, I want to talk to you about some of the most basic ideas in critical thinking. These are words that I will use often, so I want to make sure that you understand them well. The first thing I want to do today is to remind you of the source of many of the ideas that we are working with in this class. The first thing I want to do is remind you of the source of many of the ideas that we are working with in this class. Again, this is a picture of Anthony Weston, and many of the things that I'll be working from are related to his textbook, A Rule Book for Critical Thinking. Now again, I've made several changes to adapt these for ESL, or rather for EMI. EMI is short for English Mediated Instruction. So let's get started. So again, as with the previous video, here are the textbooks both in English and Japanese that have many of the same ideas. But now I want to begin by looking at some basic concepts. So I'm going to read these words. If you're a non-native speaker, I suggest that you look up most of these words and pause the video to do so. Argument or argumentation. Now, argument is a word that can mean many things. So an argument can be the name for what happens when I am talking to my wife in less than gentle terms. But it can also be the name for a device that we use to convince people of things. The word deductive is also an important word. In Japanese, this is en ekiteki. So you might not find the best definition for this term in a regular dictionary, but that's okay. We'll spend the next five weeks or so learning about what that term might mean. Inductive. An inductive argument is an argument that approaches things very differently. We'll look at these later in the class. So a statement or a claim is something that can be either true or false. A premise is a statement or claim that functions as support in an argument. A conclusion is a statement or claim that is the thing you are trying to prove in an argument. An assertion is something that you say using force instead of using argument. And to convince is a term that explains how we bring people from what they think to thinking something else. So I'll begin with to assert with a little more detail. So several dictionaries will tell you that to assert means to state or declare forcefully. And the main thing we want to emphasize here is the forcefully. Now an assertion is a positive statement or declaration, often without support or reason. Sometimes we'll call this a mere assertion, or an unwarranted assertion. So this is also a concept in computer programming. An assertion is something that you do without any support or necessary justification. It's a very strong way of deciding something. In critical thinking, assertions are usually bad things. To convince is to cause someone to believe firmly in the truth of something. So there are many ways to convince people. You can use emotions, you can use logic, you can use physical force. In critical thinking, we are hoping to convince someone using arguments. So I want to talk about how we move from assertions to arguments. So life involves disagreements. If we disagree without reason, we are merely making assertions. To think logically, we need to replace assertions with argumentation. Beyond acting as a tool for inquiry, arguments allow us to defend the conclusions we reach through them and explain why to others. So this is one of the biggest benefits of critical thinking, is that by using critical thinking, 
we can say things in a way that other people can understand them and accept them. Arguments generalize the things we say. In this way, argumentation is convincing in the public sphere. Now, critical thinking works by understanding most of language as arguments. For our purposes, we're going to define argument this way. An argument is a sequence of statements, of which one is intended as a conclusion and the other is the premises, which are intended to prove or support the conclusion. So let me explain just really brief, briefly what that means. It means that if we have a conclusion we're trying to reach, we will have one premise, one premise, one premise, and then the conclusion. Sequence means that they are in order, one, two, three, four and that they are premises and a conclusion decides the types of things that we are saying. The most important part of this is that each and every one of them needs to be a statement. If we follow this method, then we get to the bottom here. Arguments are a method of inquiry with the goal of leading us to the truth. Or at a minimum, they provide a way of finding out which views are better than others. So, this means that logical arguments provide an objective way to handle disagreements. Now, a statement, this is a very important term for us, a statement is a claim that can be either true or false. Consequently, statements are, usually, but not always, stated declaratively. So, even if that doesn't make sense, even if you don't know the English grammar, we're going to talk a little bit about the things that are statements. So I'll give you one good example. The sky is blue. This is a true statement most of the time. How are you? This is not a statement. How do we know? It's very simple. We can ask ourselves, is this true or false? So if I say, how are you? I don't know if that's true or false. It's a question. I could have many, many answers, but it itself is not true or false. If I say, gosh, this also is not true or false. There's no content in this. There's nothing in the world that would make that true or false. If I say, I don't like you, we'll talk about this at another point, but for now, let's just say this isn't a statement. There's no way for me to know whether this is true or false. It's just something someone is saying. So let's test ourselves. So I'm going to say something. You tell me whether this is a statement or not. Ouch. This is not a statement. This is just, I feel hurt. But it's not even saying that. What is your name? Is this a statement? No, this is not a statement. How about this one? The sun is blue. Strangely, this is a statement. So, some of you might think, no, this can't be a statement. This is false. But statements are not not statements because they are false. Again, the definition of a statement is something that can be true or false. If something is false, that probably means it is a statement. So this is a statement. Next one. The sky is red. This is also a statement. Again, it's a false statement. How about this? Hawaii is a part of Japan. This too is a statement. It is a false statement, but it is a statement. Dr. K has two feet. Also a statement. And last, but not least, when is the homework due? Is this a statement? The answer is no, because this is not something that could be true or false. If you ask the question, is there homework, we're getting closer, that's yes or no. If I said, the homework is to watch this lecture, that is a statement. If I said, the homework is to swim in the ocean, that's also a statement. The first one is true, the second one is false. So again, how do we know? Ask about a sentence, can it be true or false? 
if it can be true or false, it's a statement. So there are two moons in the sky. This is false, but since it is false, we know it can be true or false. So we divide statements in a very important way. One special type of statement is called the conclusion. This is the statement you are trying to prove is true. So this is what we are building up to. The other type of statement is a premise. And premises are statements that you believe that are true, or sorry, statements you believe would be helpful in proving your conclusion. These statements don't have to be true. But, you should believe they're true if you're using them to support a conclusion. Or you should believe they help make that conclusion true. So now I want to talk about one of the hardest terms to define. Especially if you're not coming from a background strong in critical thinking. This is the term logical. Most of the definitions are not very helpful, but I'll read them for you anyway of or according to the rules of logic or formal argument. A logical impossibility uses sound reasoning. The information is displayed in a simple and logical fashion. Some synonyms, regal, reasoned, well-reasoned, reasonable, rational, left brain, sound, cogent, well thought out, valid. Antonyms, illogical and irrational. Another thing to mention, you can also refer to things that are natural or sensible given the circumstances. It would be logical for you to do your homework. It is a logical progression from the job before. Now, let me simplify. This makes it a lot easier, I think. Something is logical if the meaning of each part is clear. The parts are connected. The order of the parts easily leads to the conclusion and the role of each premise supports the conclusion. Let's look at what I would call a very illogical argument. One, I like ice cream. Two, therefore let's eat yakiniku. Three, asahikawa is cold. Now, this is a very illogical argument. Hopefully, you can see some of the reasons why, just using your head. So I'll give you some hints. For one thing, the conclusion's in the middle. Therefore, let's eat yakiniku. For another thing, the premises, I like ice cream, and Asahikawa is cold, don't connect very strongly to let's eat yakiniku. In fact, they don't connect to each other well. So, this argument has poor connectivity, bad order, and it's very unclear how this is happening. So hopefully somewhere in your brain you thought, this doesn't make any sense. Let's do a little bit better. I like meat. Asahikawa is cold. Therefore, let's eat yakiniku. This argument is a little bit better. For one, the conclusion's at the end. For another feature, one of the premises does connect to the conclusion. Yakiniku is barbecued meat, and I like meat. Asaikawa's cold doesn't connect very well. So let's move a little bit better. I like yakiniku, you like barbecue, therefore let's eat yakiniku. This is a much better argument. Both of the premises connect to each other, and they connect to the conclusion, and they're in order. It's not a perfect argument, but it's a step in the right direction. I want to look at two more arguments with you, and then we'll call it a day. Sample argument two. If carbon emissions will go up, then the ice caps will melt. Carbon emissions will go up. So if these are the premises, I hope you can guess what the conclusion is. Therefore, the ice caps will melt. So again, the first two parts, premises. These support it. Last part, the conclusion, is what we're trying to prove. So let's go on to one more. So building a Disneyland near Tokyo increased traffic to Chiba. 
Two, Disneyland Hong Kong increased local traffic. Therefore, building a Disneyland in Asahikawa will probably increase traffic on the Hokkaido Expressway. Alright, where are the premises? Answer. The premises are up here at the top. And the conclusion is here at the bottom. Alright, this is Andrew Kamazinski at Hokkaido University of Education in Asahikawa, and you have been watching a flip for the class Critical Thinking. This is the second flip in the video series, and the first one assigned as homework. So I hope that you have a pleasant week, I hope that you keep watching the videos, and if you have any questions, please feel free to comment on the videos, or if you're in class, to ask me during class. If you have any suggestions, I also welcome those. Thank you for your time and your consideration.